Hey, kitty girls. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race All-Stars Season 8. We're discussing episodes 8 and 9 because, you know, it's July 2nd. It's going into the Independence Day holiday weekend. And what better thing to do when the fireworks are going off than to listen to two queens bitch about other queens who don't know what the fuck they're doing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, we there's. Starting, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that are new to the show, um, that is not a typical start. But my name's Gary. With me is my ever fabulous co-host. Who everyone is, Damon. Yeah. Mm, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? What? We're only here every couple of episodes. That's what you get. Yeah. <laughs> Things on the fly. Speaking of which, we're going to be discussing. You're a winner, baby. And Carson Kressley, this is your gay ass life. Sorry, they didn't include ass. They just said this is your gay life, but you know they wanted to. Mm -hmm. You know they wanted to. So this is our third episode uh, in this particular series for us where we're discussing uh, the episodes of All Stars 8, RuPaul's Drag Race. You know, the the OG, the American born, that kind of that kind of deal. Mm -hmm. So, um... I was just thinking about these two episodes. I hate to say this. I'm just going to put this as a blanket statement out there. Uh, eh? I mean, they were okay. I could, I could. Let, ooh. Yeah, that's that's a good. <laughs> that's a that's a good way to put this. That's a really good way to put this. Well, I, I don't I don't like saying this, but I feel like it was an inevitable it was inevitable what happened happened. Yeah. And I don't feel that it was I don't know as entertaining as probably production thought it was going to be. Yeah. So yeah. with that being said, uh why don't we get into our first segment? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Racers, start your engines and may the best drag queen win. All right, children. So this is uh, Put the Pedal to the Metal, our first section of our discussion in this episode, where we give our overall thoughts, and they fall into three categories. Serves. Yes, Mama, where we think that you actually did nice things, good things that you deserve a little bit of praise for. Swerves. Which is where, bitch, that'd be a pothole in the racetrack, and you should have avoided doing that. Mm -mm. And last but not least, the ever-so-controversial nerve. Because it is either positive or negative. As in, girl, you got nerve, mama. <laughs> or, mm, yeah. Or. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe, I'm maybe your face. gaze failed you. <laughs> <laughs> no one told you you shouldn't have done that. What the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> so, with that being said, uh, why don't we start with serves, David? What are you giving a serve for? So, I am going to give a serve to Lala's Redemption. Okay. I'm going to talk a little bit about it. So in episode eight, they mm -hmm. had a design challenge where they had to take a box of previous winners. They didn't do Chad or Alaska, but whatever. Um, um, previous winners and create an outfit that kind of says you're a winner, baby. And I'm giving props to Lala because we have we knew from the her season we have the the ever so wonderful wonderfully terrible bag look mm -hmm. the the mama this is garbage this what how the how what the hell like happened and we kind of got a little bit in you know this in this season so far with her winning did she win that design challenge i think they did give her that win Yes, that's when she won. I'm pretty sure. I'd have to look back, but I'm pretty sure she won that. And but in this episode in particular, she informs us that she made in the course of an evening or a day or whatever you want to give it three dresses. Three. 
gown like dresses. We saw we saw two of them. There's one she walked the runway on, and then there was the one that she was building that we kind of got a really good glimpse of that was all I think almost finished, and she kind of scrapped it at the last minute, which I don't understand why, but that's just me. Um, I would have done something with that shit. I figured something out anyway. But <laughs> um, and then we know that apparently she she says she made another one that she scrapped. So mm-hmm. this last dress that she walked the runway in is um, her third go at this. And considering what we learned, and we consider that we learned that she was not she was using this um, rhinestone or stone fabric, which is difficult to use, especially with a sewing machine because it you know it hits you know, it can hit, a needle can hit it and it can break. So. I'm giving her props for that, especially considering she did three. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't know what all they look like. Well, we know what one looked like. And and I, I do feel a little bad because that I'm sure that was like two in the morning, like <laughs> sewing at the sewing machine and trying to figure something out and you coming up with what you can. Right. Whatever. And was it great? It was almost great. I will give her props. I love the color and the choice. I just think that other choices probably should have been made that would have made it, elevated it more. Um, I would have loved for her to have used, done something else, something a little different. But she was trying to go for a gown, and this is what we got. Right. I think that's fair. I mean, I, I guess... I was disappointed, but at the same time, I was being realistic, and I was like, well, girl, if this is your third outfit that you mm-hmm. put together, like, time was working against you from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, in regards to the very first outfit, when they held that fabric up and she was like, oh, I just don't know about this, and I've listened to some other, like, folks kind of talk about that, and they mm-hmm. basically said um, that it was too loud, it was too busy as a fabric. Like, it was, mm-hmm. it just visually was on the border of assaulting, like, like, mm. and I think the the concept is is that it would be good in pieces, but not yeah. like a whole floor oh, length cool. gown kind of a deal right. because it's because it was bold, yeah. it was bright, it had a whole lot of pattern stuff going on with it, um, and it was sequin. So I think some people were like, either you know what you're doing with it, or just don't touch it. <laughs> that's and that's a fair point because I could see again this was in Shea Coulee's basket if I'm remembering right box I should say. And going back mentally on it, I could have seen that being a really fun, like, wrap or something where it's not all mm. one fabric or connect, like, part of, like, a pattern on a dress, like a, like a, I forget what, like a hoop, not a hoop, yeah, a hoop skirt kind of feel where it kind of goes, flares out. But it's not the full thing. Like, you're taking, alternating it with another fabric. Maybe this orange one, if they worked well together, I don't think they did. But, like, if you use it as kind of like the pleats of a skirt, like mm. a bigger pleat, that's sort of like making it kind of around and it kind of goes back and forth with it, doing something on one side, maybe doing it kind of as a drape across something else, sort of like a... Um, I'm going to say epaulette, but that's probably the wrong term. Um, just drape something draped across so that it's, it has something else to kind of go with it. Right. Um, but that being said, um, I'm not a fashion designer, and probably neither is Lala, but she did something really good with what she had. And again, considering that was her third dress, like, props to you. I have this vision because it was Shea Coulee's um, box or trunk. I have this vision of her wearing um, this kind of like interpretation of a mod outfit. So like the skinny, Mm. like the skinny, like little black dress. But over Mm -hmm. top of it is this like puffy coat Mm. that's like kind of Missy Elliott. But like then she Mm. has these like angular mod black sunglasses with a black beret on. Mm-hmm. Like I just have this I don't know why Like that's what that Kind of evoked for yeah. me But girl That's somewhat like Designing something And it's sure as hell Ain't gonna get done In a couple hours So yeah, That's true <laughs> Like you ain't someone you, We don't have time For all that Right 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 <laughs> So yeah No I, th- I think that's fair 
Um, for me, I wanted to give a serve to Alexis for her You're a Winner Baby runway. Um, mm -hmm. I hate to say it, but she fucking trounced yeah. everybody else on that runway when they came out in their outfits. I was like, oh, and this is a finished look. Yes. Like, absolutely. And end of story. Now, whether or not I would say that it evoked Trinity the Tuck, mm, no, I don't know. Like, I, I don't see Trinity wearing that. I mean, well, I guess I could, but it just, it didn't have enough of her flavor. Yeah. Um, I mean, yes, all the props to Alexis for the scenes and the sewing and, like, the pattern lineup and, like, mm -hmm. spray painting fucking tool to get it to match the color of the gown. Like, yeah, all of that is worthy of it. And the feathers and the whole bit. Like, it, it all worked. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if I looked at the outfit and you said, who, what queen out of all of the drag race, you know, all-stars winners does this evoke? I'd be like, uh, I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. So I mean, that's, that's fair. So, I mean, I, I think it was definitely a serve. And I mean, it was fucking better than what like Candy Muse put out. Hello. I mean. Okay. <laughs> yes. That garbage. Mama. I was like, no, 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 no. I, I no. can't. Oh. I, I almost I almost made this like a whole like swerve or, or nerve rant okay. because I was sitting here looking at this outfit that she made and all the time that she had to make this, you looked at all of the things that were in that basket and this is what you came up with. This black halter dress with this weird ass slit that was didn't fit, was a little too big and didn't do anything. It was just there. Like, I'm just being blunt. It was just right, right. there. And and that's all you did. Like, that's my biggest issue. Right. That's all she did. Right. There was all these other fabrics or all these other, like, elements that were in this basket. We saw them because Jimbo was playing with them. And you had all of these other little elements. You couldn't make any jewelry. You couldn't make any, like fascinators you couldn't do anything with that red fabric that you were originally doing you're like oh it's gonna make gloves well like you were i think you were wanting someone to make the gloves for you is what you're what you're wanting to do happen and and when no one was going to do that for you then you kind of got well i guess i'll just do something else but like it it fell considering the challenge being you're a winner baby it fell very flat right yeah it, that it looked like a season three or four not even that one or two hell like a dress and i'm i'm being that's saying something i'm being very negative about those seasons i'm saying like this is bad right i mean i i agree that that like there was there's more things that could have definitely been done like she could have taken the red fabric and like made it into piping along the edges mm -hmm. um just to like add a, a touch or a splash of something she could have you know use the red fabric to make some things, including gloves. And so she could add something to like the shoe or her hair or no, I, I agree. Like, I just thought it was, I just thought it was bad. I just I didn't bad. care for it. And I was, was like, bad. no, <clears throat> it's so no. Bad. Okay. So with that, let's move into <laughs> swerves. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> Damon. Um, something tells me this isn't about fashion. No, it's not necessarily about fashion. Right. Um, I wish I had that like uh, meme or Vine song of like, why the fuck you lying? Like, why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Oh. Well, the closest I got is probably this. What the fuck you doing here? That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I said, Alexis girl, um, why are you lying? Why? Like, real? Like, there's, there's a like, there is video evidence. We, we, we heard it. We all heard it. We heard what you said to Lala in the workroom. Like, we heard, yes, everyone is pointing to this, like, I'll never forget it. No, we're not. I'm not pointing to that. I'm okay. literally pointing to a point when Lala was talking to you, and you, he said to you, if you're in the top, and you said... I got you. 
or whatever she said. I don't, you know, I don't have it by memory, but it felt very clear to me that you had every intention of saving Lala, or you should have. Mm. And I've seen the occasional, um, I think you've been making um, posts on the Twitters and kind of saying stuff and alluding to things. We, we know. We don't know. We know. And it made you untrustworthy. Mm. Um, and this wasn't the first time. We have to go all the way back to like when Heidi was talking about the thing that you, that Candy said and she went to you and you shook your head yes and then you said no. Which was it? Well, I think it was both in that case, but mm. But again, it felt very it felt very it it broke trust mm. in a sense. It shook trust then. And then here we are now, episodes later, you're with Lala. We know how you feel about her. That's fair, what have you. But I feel like Lala was not expecting this to happen. Or maybe she was. And But again, it's Lala, so we can't really tell. Yeah. But um, it just felt very shaking of the trust and then breaking the trust completely. And I am not at all surprised that this most recent episode, everyone voted to send you home. Spoiler alert. Well, okay. So <laughs> I have thoughts, but I don't want to any. I don't want to interrupt you. <laughs> no, I'm done. I'm good. Um, girl, she got played. She got played. She got played. She got played. She got played by the edit. She got played by the game. Like, Alexis thought she was playing the game. Everyone else is playing a different game. She's over here playing Tiddlywinks, and everyone else is playing Candyland. Like, I don't know how else to say it. Like, she wasn't in the same game that everybody else was. And that, and it's so evident. When I look back on the whole season so far, I was like, fuck them. They came for her in the worst way. They built her up in the edit to be like like sort of wishy-washy and that she had this thing for Lala. So the, I think the whole concept was that when she like selected Lala to go home, like everyone was going to be like, oh, how dare you? You even Rue was. And I, Oh pff, fuck. She probably does seven different reactions every episode. And then, <laughs> you know, Damon says in air quotes. Yeah. Later, just so the listener are away. <laughs> <laughs> no, I but I do. I really think Alexis got played, and and uh, I just don't understand what happened. Like that, she wasn't getting it. That she wasn't paying attention. Like, okay, mm. so let's jump ahead. Episode nine, Untucked. I'm watching Untucked, and I was like, oh, girl, you're an idiot. You're a freaking idiot. Like, I'm watching Untucked, and I'm paying attention to the queens, and I was like, oh, I was like, oh, it's obvious oh. that you're going oh, yeah. home. Because like you just can't yeah. stop your mouth. You know what? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> there was a moment, like when <laughs> I have to laugh at it. Alexis is talking to Jessica while Candy is off, you know, doing the thing. Right. And Jessica, Alexis tells Jessica. Me and Candy have this thing where we're going to vote each other. Why the fuck would you say that? She's a like, fucking idiot. Why would you tell someone, oh, by the way, um, like me and Candy have this thing where we're going to save each other. So guess who's going, guess who I'm voting for? Listen, you I'm going to. literally gonna... <laughs> told Jessica who she was voting for, that she was voting, that you were voting for her. You told her point blank, period. I'm voting for you. Don't give me, and then don't go in there and give me the boo who I love you. Like, no, fuck you. You knew exactly what you were doing when you walked into that, when you said that. And then when you told her that she was going to happen. And then flash forward to when Jessica's over um, talking with, with Jimbo. And her and Candy are talking. And Alexis tells Candy, I told Jessica about our deal. Honey, Why? What was the point of that? Girl. And then she asked Candy, like, without, I'm, I'm 
not remembering exactly what she said, but she said something about you're not like she said something about you're not going to vote for me, right? And and Candy was silent. And then the next phrase that we hear Candy says is, uh, "We have to be. I'm going to. We have to be strategic." I noticed that. You asked Candy a point blank question about saving you, and she said, "Quiet." And then the next question, or you said something about being strategic, and and Candy said, "Yes, we have to be strategic." I'm going to say this with all the love in my heart. Alexis is a dumbass. She is. She, that's why I said she was playing a whole different game. She wasn't paying any attention. Or, 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 or. She's crazy smart like a fox. Because mm. she knew she was leaving. So she was like, well, at least I'm going to give some some TV. Mm-hmm. Because... I'm like, it's the only explanation. Either you're an idiot and you didn't know what you were doing, or you actually were really smart and a genius and you were just doing it for the camera because you knew your ass was going home. Like, I mean. Because I agree with you. I was like, why would you tell Jessica that you have a bond with Candy and that you have a quote-unquote alliance or whatever and you're going to and you're gonna vote for her, which means you're going to vote Jessica's ass out because then automatically Jessica's going to vote your ass out. Well, mm-hmm. okay, so those two kind of cancel each other out, which means Candy gets ultimately to send whoever home. And if you weren't paying attention, Candy and Jessica have kind of had a bond. They don't have no no beef between them. They have no issues. So Right. Anyways. Absolutely. No, yeah, it so, was just it was just this whole wild Mm-hmm. situation i feel like so i was yeah. like okay you know it's yeah. it's, it's yeah. it was kind of obvious in that case gary yes what's your slur <laughs> i'm gonna I, okay i i must have a lot of love in my heart and it is overflowing because i just keep giving it out of this episode but <laughs> girl katya's cameo visit air quote visit <sighs> I love Katya. Like, I think Katya is like one of the kookiest, like, like silly, funny, kind of weird drag queens. Mm-hmm. Who and not weird like Jimbo. Jimbo's very artistically like avant garde kind of weird. Katya's just unconventional. She's like, right. she's like, she's not a pageant beauty. She's not technically a comedy queen. She's not a Broadway baby. She's like. You know, and she's not a mix of them like Varla Jean Merman. She's just her. Like, she has such a mold of her own. And she comes into this episode and just kind of disrupts shit. (laughs) And I'm like, what is going on? And I was like, oh, my God, is this the first time ever, like, a drag, like, a Rue girl is going to be the guest judge? Like, that was my hope. I have goosebumps talking it out loud into the universe. I was like, that would be fucking wild if Katya right. was the guest judge because of who knows what the behind the scenes drama was that they couldn't get the celebrity that they wanted. So they picked the the Russian whore, like previous non winner, to be the <laughs> other judge. You know, I was like, this is wild. Mm hmm. But, honey, it's a swerve. Like, it made no comprehensive sense in the episode. It was so, like, it didn't resolve in a direction that made anything. She was just there for filler, I guess. It was was chaos and filler. That was the whole point. Because, realistically, she did absolutely nothing. Like, I just want you, like, she just came in like a whirlwind, mm-hmm. asked a bunch of questions that had nothing to do with anything that was going on because I think they were getting ready for the runway, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they are all putting their makeup yeah. on. Yeah, so they're putting their makeup on the day of elimination. They go in, she comes in, whirlwinds around, asks a bunch of, like, point blank, pointed questions about, like, their sex lives and, and all these other things and just everything else, and then she just leaves slowly while crawling on the floor for again no apparent reason so it felt very it felt forced in a way i don't know how else to say it it didn't feel like this was meant to be something like you know 
Like she kind of, so Katja introduced herself and she mentioned like, I'm a comedy queen, blah, 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 blah. And then that was the extent of it. Like, oh, she's here to kind of like Chanel and Raven. She's Mm. there to like provide advice and guidance and what have you. Technically this should have happened yesterday, but what have you. Um, But no, that's not it. Because she does not provide any guidance or offer any information or provide any insight. Right. So, it, it, what the fuck was it? <laughs> what was the right, point? Right, there right, right. There was no point. Like, what was the point? There was just. I mean, did Katya just agree to do this so she can get the check? So she can right get that <laughs> that 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 hundred hundred percent that. If you were her ass and they called you up because you lived in L.A. and were like, "Hey, could you come in for like a half day or whatever?" and blah blah blah, she'd be like, "How much? How much are we talking here?" And, and you I know, bet, and I bet it was literally she's was. I, I bet if you co- correlate mm. like episodes, of, uh, with um, this episode of of Drag Race, she's probably wearing the same outfit. I as soon as you started to say that, I was like, "Hmm, very interesting." Yeah, I don't I know. Just, or I, she had another I, gig or something. I yeah, yeah. It, it it's it was wild. So, I, I, Katya, love you. It's a swerve. I don't know what you were doing. I don't understand what's going on because like the whole thing was fun, but made no no, no contextual sense. Right. None. Not, no sense whatsoever. Could could have left it out in the edit and it wouldn't have mattered. Exactly. But they paid. But they paid her, and now she gets more money theoretically. Theoretically, because she's in the episode. Mm-hmm. As opposed to being in the episode and being cut out of the episode, she's actually aired. So. Oh God, I wonder. Oh, this is bad. I'm just. I have so many like feelings and opinions, and the one thing that I think of is like. Oh, are we looking like to re up the contract so that she can come back in like four years and do like an all stars or something? So she had to show up in an episode. Like, that's one of the things. If you've watched Bussy, one of the big things is like if they like after I think four years or something is when their quote unquote like term ends. So it could have been that. This is me thinking out loud and conspiracy theory bullshit. This is me just going on that. But I. That's something that could have been, and it was just like we need you to come in and do shit. So, right, come come in and do some random shit in this episode of All Stars, and then, you know, we got you for unlock for the next four years. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's so with <laughs> with that being said, you ready to move on to Nerve? Sure. Okay, I see what you wrote on our document here. I don't know which direction this is going, because this is the category where it's either a positive or a negative. <laughs> um, I will I will write down, I will read what I wrote down when I saw this makeup. Okay. Let me look at my pad, because I even started. Let's see. What does this say? Yeah. This says, Rue, your hair and makeup is terrible. <laughs> I, I have the point to walk, to write that down in my notes because it was so beyond what she has done in ever. Okay. This was, she had this huge. Eyeliner, like the eyeliner, almost like almost like a Trixie point. Maybe not so big, but it was kind of to that point. And then she had the like neon, like yellow or green, like on top of it. And then she had this hair, this like sperm, like crusted, like off to the side, like caught in a wind tunnel. Okay, fucking hair. So you're talking about episode eight. Yes, I'm talking about episode eight. When the, she wore, the, I think, the scoochie dress, and she uh, had the, the the white asymmetric hair. Gotcha. I wouldn't call it asymmetric. <laughs> well, it wasn't balanced from, <laughs> from left to right, girl, so what are you going to call it? <laughs> what word did I just say? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, that's interesting to me because, honestly, I hated episode nine. 
That hair, girl? That hair. I didn't even know that. I, I, yeah. You know what? You yeah. know what you shouldn't do, Mama Rue? Try to be Diana Ross. That was a blonde Diana Ross looking looking thing, and I was like, "No, Mama, no, I don't, I don't, I don't." My how God. many gummies did you eat? Like, what what did you and Raven get into? How much did you smoke? Like, what the hell happened backstage? Because I was like, "No, no, it's so it's, it's not it's not good." Do you? Know, it's bad enough that Lala Re wore Alexis's orange ass wig on the runway, and it was too far back on her head. Not every bald bitch could get away with that, okay? So, like, and then we've got Rue in episode nine with her with her yellow hair, like, like t a little not just just a skosh too far back, like just just a tiny mm -hmm. bit too far Definitely. back. It wasn't bad. Yeah. It wasn't as bad as Lala's, but I was like, no, honey, and it was so flat. Like I was yeah. just I was so confused. I was like, wow, this is yeah. this is this, not a this not, was, this not not it. I don't know who who Raven was Raven on a break? Did Raven take a day off? Did Well, someone has speculated or kind of made a comment that uh Rue's hairstylist has changed yet again. Mm. Cuz if if you know anything about the franchise, you know there was a whole uh to do about Delta AKA Gabriel mm -hmm. and things changing and they went to someone else for hair. And apparently that has changed at least once, if not twice since. Mm. And this might be evidence of that. I don't know. That's fair. Like I will admit it feel, it just felt off. And I will say like, and then in episode eight, it felt very, very off. And I'm commenting. Um, so friends of ours yesterday came over and they had like one of them casually watching drag race, mostly through, like recaps and watching mm -hmm. recaps of stuff online. Um, and <laughs> Rue came, so this is episode nine. This was the red outfit. And he, she, Rue came out and she got to the top. And the, one of the things he said, and this is totally random, he goes, What is she wearing? And it was said in a very, like, I don't, what the fuck is this? Kind right, of way. right, right. Like, what is she wearing? And we, pause to kind of explain like more than likely because that was the outfit that had the like obvious like you knew it was two pieces like you could really tell because there's this gap nowhere else but there's this gap at her thigh that had like where you could see like her I guess pantyhose for lack of a better phrase um, where and but the gown kept going so mm. it was this random gap um, so we told him like because you know, he doesn't watch it normally. And I'm like, oh, Rue out, Rue's outfits usually are two pieces. Like nine times out of ten, they're two pieces. And typically what happens is she does the runway, takes off the second piece, probably takes off all the padding and everything else, except for maybe the last episodes, whatever, and then gets in some sweats and sits um, behind the um, sits behind the judging booth. So she's poised from here up. Right. And then the rest is all casual, maybe even untucked for all we know. Uh, but he he was like, oh, and I was like, more than likely, that's like a clear. I don't know if that was intentional, if maybe it was slipping. Who knows? I have the feel it was intentional because they wouldn't have they wouldn't have just let that slide. I think Jim agrees with you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know, but okay. Yeah. I didn't yeah. notice the outfit as much as you did in episode eight. I was just like, oh, this is evocative of other things you've done. Yeah. Eh. I just, in, in episode eight, I just didn't like it. And I didn't like the hair and I didn't like the makeup. And it just felt very, very, very off. Yeah. Which is why I'm giving it a nerve. Because I'm like, either this is you trying to go in this, again, this more now, not like, you know, now direction with your makeup and recent kind of thing are someone was having an off day. Like you said, maybe the edibles kicked in a little too soon and you're like, sure, go crazy. And we got what we got because it didn't look like anything she's done in a while. Well, and this is where I hear jokes about how Mama Rue is like, 
Like, do be up like them, like them kids do on the Tiki Talks. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like she's so out of touch with the now, like, that when she tries to do something that's current, it just falls. Because it's like, no, girl. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Anywho. Yeah. Gary. Um, so here's the thing. This could go either way, but I'm going to say it's for the positive. Mm-hmm. So Jimbo's face keeny. It's technically not a face keeny. It's just a head covering. But it is the biggest nerve to pull on the runway in I don't even know how many seasons. Because the most infamous, like, like closeness of this, everyone probably thinks of the Valentino situation where she was asked to take her mask off. Mm-hmm. And I kept waiting for Rue to ask her to take the head wrap off. I kept waiting because I was like, well, this is cute and it looks fun. There is absolutely zero acknowledgement of what you look like underneath this. Mm -hmm. And I was waiting for that to happen, that she was going to get called out and she had to take it off. And then it would either be the scandal of the season or like the, the, the bait and switch of the season where production made it seem like she wasn't going to do her face up. And then she actually did do her face up. And so everybody gets to be surprised. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, but that none of that happened. Like she was just allowed to have her face covered and to have pearls as eyeballs and a smile. And that's okay. Yeah. 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 So like, to me, it is the biggest nerve, like, like, Mm -hmm. because I was like, like you are, I, I guess my feeling on it is the only reason she got a pass is because she is so like artistically avant-garde and strange and weird that everybody was like, oh, that's Jimbo. Like that's a Jimbo thing and that's acceptable. I'm like, oh, but if like, you know, Lala did it, there, there'd be some criticism and some question. Do you know what I mean? Like it just, it's, yeah. it's, I'm just picking Lala at random. You know, it doesn't matter yeah. who it was. Like, I think if they're not known for, for being kooky and strange and weird, then yeah. there might've been some eyebrow raising and speculation or whatever. Right. So I, I agree. It was, it was, it was a, a gamble choice. in the, in the, in the highest, le- well, not quite. <laughs> I'll get to, the, I'll get to the next one in a second. But yeah, the, the bigger the, gamble. Yeah. The, um, we knew she didn't put on makeup, like, because we see it in the start of episode nine, where she's laying on the table on her on her boobies. She's kind of laying there, and she clearly has no makeup on her face. Mm. And I get that maybe they had it. It could be that she had already taken her makeup off if she had any on. It's possible. I don't think that was the case because right. they were getting undressed. So it is possible, but I don't think it was. Right. But either way, um, I agree with that. I think that would take a lot of nerve. Um, and I agree that I don't think anyone else could have gotten away with it. Yeah, it's I know that, highly um, unlikely. Silky didn't. And when they did their, I think they even did a face keeny runway on, her, on that season. And... Um, she did the the bug. Was that her season or was that All Stars? No, that was her season. Yeah, that was her season. Hmm. I'm gonna start looking. Bear with me. <laughs> so yeah, I just thought that that was um, that was something, to say the least. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't honestly. I don't remember the the silky thing. I'm trying to find it now. Yeah, it was the face keeny realness look, um, where she looked like the bug. Let's see if I can get this to show. Oh, here we go. Let's go to Telegram on my computer because I was doing it really fast, and we're going to you. I'm gonna throw that in here. In our group chat. Hopefully it'll work, but. Oh, 
Is there a picture? It should be. Did it not go through? Well, it went to the website. Oh, wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, never mind. There it's it a pop-up. Okay. It took a moment. Oh. God, I forgot yeah, all about that. Yeah, remember that? Where she put on a lip, and I think that was it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's obvious in this picture she didn't do her eyes. Yep. Interesting. Okay, well... <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just thought that it was a bold move because it worked, mm -hmm. you know. So with that being said, you want to move on to our next segment? Let's do it. Okay. All right, so it's times for snaps and eye rolls, a.k.a. our hits and misses. Sometimes we refer to them as the highs and the lows of these particular episodes that stood out for us. So, Damon, who are you giving snaps to? Who who are you, like, celebrating or what? So we've been, talk so we've been talking about Jimbo and her taking risks. Mm. I'm going to give her props and snaps for taking a risk in this most recent episode where she channeled Joan Rivers for the um, mm, roast right. of Carson Kressley. Um, I just, it was hilariously funny. Um, it was a great choice. Again, it was a big risk because you're not just being you, you were being you, being someone else. And additionally, she was being someone else who, Joan Rivers, who is known to like, roast can, can roast a bitch like we we know this like right. she joan was known for her biting humor and i genuinely laughed the almost the entire time she did a really good job she took some really good choices what we got in the edit i'll put that by that caveat there um and it was very very enjoyable i laughed i enjoyed myself i i wouldn't say like some of these people were saying, like they would close their eyes or if they weren't looking, she was genuinely like Joan Rivers. I wouldn't give it that, but I think she was doing a really good job of what she was planning to do. And it was a very big risk that she took and I, it paid off in spades because she got her fourth win. Um, so yeah. Props to her. That's fair. Um, in conjunction with that, uh, the oh. same person gets snaps for me. God. Baby, I'm calling it right now. The most gonzo lip sync ever in Drag Race history. Like, hands down, the most bonkers, wild, weird, like... When when they showed them choosing the lipsticks and <laughs> Jimbo's on the screen in this weird ass like uh white sperm meets an egg like thing, like this amorphous blob situation, I was like, Oh okay. Like so... this is gonna get strange. Yeah. And all so... I kept thinking was is well, I hope it makes sense with the music because if if you – obviously, they know what the song is they're going to be lip syncing to because I'm like, she's either going out with a bang because it's going to be an absolute train wreck disaster and she wants to have an iconic look or it's going to work in her favor, which it did mm -hmm. and was some of the wildest shit I've ever seen. Like, And here's the thing is she goes up against Silky and – you want to talk about, like, going up against a lip-sync assassin. Like, the most infamous, most lip-synced queen in, in the, the franchise. And I was like, well, like, if, if, you want, if you want to shake someone off their record, off their game, like, you go batshit crazy. Like, yep. And you don't do the usual, like, I'm going to flail around on the floor and I'm going to break the lights and I'm going to, like, you know, throw my hair up into the rafter. Like, 
None of that. You're just going to be like kooky, weird, yes. like clowny. Mm hmm. Wild, wild, yeah. wild. Absolutely. It was. <laughs> it was. The weirdest fucking shit I've seen in a long time. And we, you may not know this, but if you're a fan of Jimbo, I believe this look comes from UK versus the world. I'm pretty sure this. I, I thought it was. That. I thought it was seen before somewhere because it yeah. didn't seem brand new to me. I was like, yeah. "Oh, I think I've seen this before." But and this was clown, like absolute clown buffoonery. Like I, I can't put my finger on how delightfully twisted this was hmm. the 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 big thing for me the thing that like I, i'm gonna say this and it's gonna sound nasty i bet that costume smelled considering the baloney i'm just gonna put that out there she pulled baloney from somewhere i'm assuming from the egg that's on her belly or whatever that is no from her crotch I, ooh, even worse. <laughs> it's um, from the same place she pulled the lipstick. Yeah. Like, I don't... Because this, mm, this is clearly baloney. What's, is... What was wild to me was that she threw it at the judges. Yes. Like, yes. she literally was just flinging, like, pieces of baloney towards the judging panel. Not towards the queen's. Like, not towards production, like, to the cameraman or whatever. She was literally throwing it at the judges, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, she really must feel she has nothing to lose, that she could, yeah. she could just go out this, this way. This is crazy. She was, it was, like I said, delightfully twisted. I think that is the best way I can put this. Um, that will probably be in that image of her... Um, Skipping up to the um, the the lipsticks to make the choice will probably be stuck in my brain and in my nightmares for a long time. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Yes. So that being said, uh, what do you have eye rolls for? Oh Lord! Oh 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 oh! Okay. Uh, I'm curious. Oh. I have never been more heated than watching Untucked in season nine and seeing the Silky as the lip sync assassin come up, come in, um, and then she's putting her, like, taking her stuff out like they've been doing in Untucked. Like, all the lip sync assassin shows up and then they show them, like, starting to get ready even though they come fully, like, make up um, and Silky pulls out a garbage bag, which has her outfit in it, and she pulls out a garbage bag. I don't, it, it, it feels like, what the fuck is going on? Mm -hmm. Where have you been? I understand saving money. I get that. But you're going on camera for all stars coming in as a lip sync assassin and you can't put this outfit in a suitcase. You can't like take the time and effort to put this in something so that it doesn't look like you threw this, like you threw this in a, in a, in again, in a garbage bag and ran to stage like it feels it just felt very off to me and i don't know where this came from but it just feels like it feels like you're again you're ultimately just doing this for for a check right which yeah that's what that's the point in a sense but like it feels it it cheapened the moment for me and it, it heated me because i feel like you should know better. Now, if that's the only thing that that outfit could 
successfully fit in, that's one thing. But we've seen everyone bring like these totes. Right. And you could have had an opportunity to like bring it in something else. And it just felt very weird to me that you couldn't because you're if I'm not mistaken, no, she's well last I heard she was in Vegas. Mm. Or was she in LA? I don't know. I don't know. But it just again, it just it 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 bothered me to the point where it it got me mad because I was like, why why is it in this why is it in this garbage bag? It's fair. I'll be honest, I didn't notice. Oh, I did. But then again, I also wasn't paying that close of attention in Untucked when she's revealed, like, and she gets out of the van and goes in or whatever. Like, it it, it never really kind of, like, makes a big impact. So I was like, oh, okay, whatever. I probably wasn't looking at the screen. <laughs> yeah. It just was, for me, it just, it was something that I just wasn't the biggest fan of. And I, considering what you're coming back for, what you're doing, and the legacy that you've had as this, like, lip-sync assassin, like this lip-sync queen that has won the most lip-syncs out of right. any queen on Drag Race. Right. It... No, that's fair. Um, yeah. Gary? So, oh. mine's, mine's really straightforward. Like, I, I'm just going to call it out. Saving Candy's ass. I don't understand why it was done. Oh, wait. I do. I do. Because I said it earlier this episode. Because Alexis is a dumb bitch. That's why. <laughs> the fuck? I Send her ass home! March right? her out the goddamn building. Watch her cry. Right. Bigger drama. Bigger TV. Yes. Anyways. I just... It I agree with you 100%. I don't know why this keeps happening. Well, and it gets worse in the next episode because now that Lala's gone, they get Alexis on video, on audio, saying how she finds Candy attractive. And I was like, oh my god. Like, not only have you now been established as a whore, like, now you are established as, like, not just a filthy whore because of the manslaught outfit, but because of, like, now you're just, like, desperate for the D, no matter where it comes from. And I was like, oh, that's sad. So sad. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> so, yeah, like, not sending Candy's ass home, I was like... That saving her, I don't understand it. I don't understand I... it. I don't understand it. And I'm sure every queen who has been on the original season and has an opportunity to come into All Stars is like, that was a dumbass move, girl. Like you had you had the opportunity to send the biggest competition home, and you didn't. And that's even not the right wording because as soon as it left my lips, I was like, well, Candy's technically not the biggest competition. Jimbo's the biggest competition, mm -hmm. but that's mm -hmm. different. Um, anyways. Jim Jimbo should have sent her home. Jimbo should have sent her home. Or Alexis should have sent her home last week. Yeah, yeah. Like, it just feels very obvious. Yeah, it, it's, 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 it seems so much like production was involved. Mm. I don't know. And yet again, like, if Alexis is as dumb as I think she is, then I don't even think production had to lean on her or do anything to get her to not pick candy. But yeah. So, yeah, there's that. Because what would have been awesome, as I think about it, um, uh, Alexis picks Candy. Mm -hmm. Jessica, it would have meant she would have gone home any, either way, but it would have been a potential shake up in the um, box is if Alexis had picked Candy because it would have said Candy... Um, Alexis, Alexis, as opposed to now what they're saying, Jessica, Alexis, Alexis, because it would have proven to Candy that she made the right decision in sending Alexis home because she knew that she was going to vote for her, mm. vote her out. And I would have too. And uh, again, with Jimbo. Jimbo had a perfect opportunity to 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 do to make this power move. 
Well, she, she knew she had heard what she heard, or right. didn't hear all that shit from episodes ago, and you had this opportunity to do it, and you could have done it right then and there. But you're like, oh, I'm gonna stay with my alliance and do what I was, you know, always said to do, and I'm gonna be the bigger. Well, whatever. Here's the problem, though: is if she had voted, if she had bounced Candy out, then she would have had, to, she would have been forced to win the next episode. Fair, because. The moment she gets in the bottom, anywhere towards the end of the race, she's going home. Like there's yeah. no re- there's no reason people wouldn't eliminate her. Sure. Then again, people keep saving Candy's ass, so maybe they'd save Jimbo's ass. I don't know. Like like the logic says, like if she if she ends up in the bottom, she's gonna go home. So the fact that she didn't end up in the bottom, like okay, fine. So but that's the problem is is if she takes Candy out, then absolutely, I see Alexis and. Uh, Jessica, Jessica being like, oh, she's absolutely coming for any of us. Like if she takes out if she takes out Candy, she's gonna take either of us out, so we have to bounce her ass out. Sure. I don't know. I don't know. I have I we could probably talk a post show because I'm I'm I we're gonna talk in post show. So hey, become a patron and you'll hear the post show. Um because I do want to talk about what's gonna happen these next two, three, four weeks. We don't know. We'll find that out here in a minute. That's one of the things I want to talk about in post-show. I also want to talk about something that happened between episodes eight and nine. Ooh. At least something I noticed. So we'll talk We'll talk about that in post-show. Speaking of which, uh, there's plenty of ways that you can give your feedback on our thoughts. You can visit our website, blogcubsoutloud.com. You can comment on there. You can actually send us an email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com. You can also just give us a phone call. Believe it or not, those things called smartphones, they actually make phone calls. You don't have to just use them for, like, texting. So you can actually call 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Leave us a voicemail message. We'd be happy to play it on the show. Or tell us you don't want to play it. We'll just discuss what you say. Uh, Social media outlets, just pretty much type in Cubs Out Loud. You can find us on there. Um, We do have an entourage chat on Telegram for Cubs Out Loud. uh, Drag Race, COL Drag Race. Um, been a little quiet of late, but I also think that's just the nature of uh, people not being super excited about All Stars Eight. I just said it. Uh, with that being said, uh, there's also a Google Calendar that you could visit, which is uh, bit.ly uh, backslash calendar dash col if you want to know when we're going to be live with our regular shows, uh, on, mostly on Sunday evenings. If you want to support us, there's several ways to do that. The first thing is you can go to zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud, and you can get different uh, items there. Like Damon right now is showing off the Cubs Out Loud Drag Race uh, tee that he has with our logo on it. Um, in that case, we have a couple other things. Uh, I personally don't have anything on there, but I do have a shirt design from Smashy, uh, who has a bunch of different stuff over in Tee Public. If you go for uh, Smashy the Bear over there, they have some great designs. And they've done some of our designs for Cubs Out Loud overall. Also, uh, as we were alluding to, you can become a patron. You can go to Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Cubs Out Loud. And for a dollar or more a month, uh, you get full episodes with the bookends, as we call them, the pre-shows and the post-shows, where we discuss things. And apparently, we're going to get into some stuff here in a minute or two that you don't want to miss out on. If you don't want to do that, you can also go to PayPal.me slash Cubs Out Loud, and you can just leave us a tip. Make a one-time financial donation. We greatly appreciate it. It helps keep the lights on around here. Uh, You can pretty much find Cubs Out Loud Drag Race on uh, your podcast feeds. Um, as an audio podcast, as its own separate item, comes out loud Drag Race, uh, where you can listen to us when we post. Damon, if people want to get in touch with you, where would they find you? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at TheaterCub79, that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9, on most of the related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umber on Twitter. That Twitter is definitely not safe for work, though. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabriel73. Um, while Twitter is still a dumpster fire and slowly circling the drain, I do have an account on there that is Gabriel73DRAG, which is all drag related things, until we figure out whatever the next social media platform is that we decide to go to because Elon Musk is the devil and just like trashing it as we speak. Drag him. No, I don't want to. He'd make an ugly drag queen. So that being said, uh, with that, we're going to exit and uh, we'll be back, I guess, in a couple of weeks, whenever we get to the finale, question mark. No one knows what the hell's going on, but we're going to discuss that in post-show in a little bit. So with that, we'll talk to you later. Bye.